Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's CITI program webinar. Today's topic is Title IX, 50 Years and Modern Challenges, and it is presented by Amber Grove. Today, our learning objectives are to identify the foundational legal and policy components of Title IX and discuss their relation to higher education practice. We'll also spend some time critically analyzing the development of Title IX over time to understand trend areas and ongoing potential impact and change. Finally, we'll apply our understanding of Title IX and related equity issues to create supportive and inclusive environments on our campuses. In the 60s, we were entering a period uh, known as the U.S. Civil Rights Movement. Often that era is associated with activism for racial equity, but legislative action of the decade also made strides in promoting equity and access to justice among other marginalized groups. Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 prohibited discrimination in education based on race, color, or national origin by any entity that received federal assistance. Title VII of that same law prohibited discrimination in employment on the basis of race, color, national origin, sex, or religion. Notwithstanding those gains in Title VI and Title VII, the federal legislation of the 1960s left an equity gap for women that wished to pursue higher education. The federal statutes offered no explicit prohibition against sex discrimination in education and offered no clear recourse for a woman who experienced such discrimination. That discrimination was rampant and women were under-enrolled in colleges and universities nationwide. Determined to bridge that gap, U.S. Representatives Edith Green and Patsy Mink worked together to enact legislation that would prohibit sex discrimination among educational programs that accepted federal funds. Ultimately ended up partnering with Senator Birch Bay in order to be successful in the passage of the Education Amendments of 1972, which amended the Higher Education Act of 1965. One provision of the amendments, which most refer to as simply Title IX, broadly prohibited discrimination on the basis of sex. And thereafter, we have a series of guidance and other documents that help us interpret Title IX and how it applies to the higher education setting. One of the foundational ones that shortly after followed was the policy interpretation in 1979 that focused on intercollegiate athletics. I also invite everyone to review our content offerings regularly as we are continually adding new courses and webinars in various areas of research, ethics, compliance, and professional development.